Good morning, C.N. Jenkins and all of our viewers. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is with us, right beside us, right in front of us, in our midst. And that's something that we can be grateful for. Here in Charlotte, North Carolina, the rain is coming down. And perhaps the rain is coming down in other states around the United States. And so we want to bring some hope and some light and some sunshine of Christ right to you where you are. You have entered into the space of worship this morning, and we are all grateful.
God, we are truly grateful for all the things that you have done in our lives. We are thankful for your presence with us. We are grateful for how you lead and guide us. And most of all, oh God, we thank you for your spirit, for you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You are always watching over us. You are always directing our path. You are always correcting us as we trust in you. So now, oh God, as we go to your word, as we go to your holy text, we pray that you, you would open up our eyes to see and our hearts to receive and our ears to hear what your spirit will reveal to us. We thank you for this opportunity to just be in your presence, whether that be via Zoom, whether it be via Facebook, oh God, whether it just be, is in our living spaces. We ask for your revelation and your truth at this time. Thank you, O oh God, for feeding us until we want no more. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My siblings, I invite you to go with me into the scripture this morning as we are reading in the Old Testament text. The scripture for us this morning is coming from Genesis chapter 17, verses 15 through 19. And then we're going to skip over and go to the chapter 21, verses 1 through 2. 1 through 2. Hear ye the word of the Lord. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will truly give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, by your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as, as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. Chapter 22, 21, verse 1. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God promised him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My siblings in Christ, I would like to preach and teach with this sermon title in mind, Trusting in God's Plan. I'm going to say it again, Trusting in God's Plan. There is a poem by Emily Kissingsley that helps us think about how we can trust in God's plan for our life. It is entitled, Welcome to Holland. And it reads, life is like planning a fabulous vacation trip to Italy. You buy a bunch of guidebooks and make wonderful plans to go to the Colosseum, the Michelangelo David, the gondolas in Venice. You may learn some handy phrases in Italian. It all is very exciting. After months of eager anticipation, the day finally arrives. You pack your bags and off you go. Several hours later, the plan lands. The stewardess comes in and says, welcome to Holland. You say, Holland? What do you mean, Holland? I signed up for Italy. I'm supposed to be in Italy all my life. I've dreamed of going to Italy. And isn't this how it can be? Life can be like this. Sometimes we plan to be married at a certain age, have children at a certain time, be 
in a specific career, obtaining certain degrees, or starting the profession of our dreams. Then life happens and surprises us with an unexpected future. You may be single with the desire to be married, or maybe you are married but navigating an unexpected divorce. Sometimes we end up in Holland instead of Italy. We're navigating a different path instead of the one that we had in mind, the one that we had dreamed about oh so very long. The reassuring part, though, is uh, about navigating through these unexpected twists and turns of life. As children of God, we have a privilege of drawing close to God's voice. And when we do this, God will help us uh, and reroute our plans, giving us reassurance uh, in the spirit of the living God uh, that this is not the end of our story. I'm just going to say it one more time. Uh, even though you may be in Holland uh, and you wanted to go to Italy, this is not the end of your story. Uh, God has more in store for you. The best is yet to come. Uh, and God will reassure you uh, in the depths of your soul uh, that Holland is not your final destination. Uh, Holland just happens to be the space in between between you reaching uh, your greatest blessing and promise from the Lord. And Holland is where, y'all, that Sarah and Abraham find themselves. They were navigating through the highs and lows of infertility. It wasn't what they had in mind. It wasn't what they dreamed of. Holland, uh, for them, represented an unexpected place a place of potential feelings of abandonment by God and fear and inadequacy and potential doubt, questioning whether God would really do what God had said. And I just want to note that once you remain in Holland long enough, you will begin to wonder if God truly sees you and does God care about what you are going through. Or you may wonder if God rerouted you to Holland as a punishment or for making a wrong decision or a missed opportunity. Have you ever been to Holland? Do you wonder sometimes what you did to get there, deserve to be there, or why you have to endure the high pressure, the suffering, or the pain? I want to offer this for those who are navigating a season and it feels as if they are in Holland. They didn't plan it, they didn't hope for it, and they shown up, didn't pray for it. Through all that you are navigating now, I want you to hear this one truth right here. Miracles still happen in unexpected places. Oh, that's your shout right there. I said miracles still happen in unexpected places. If that agrees with your spirit, just type I amen in the chat. Miracles still happen in unexpected places. Sarah didn't plan to struggle with infertility, but she navigated to the best of her ability for 90 years. Then when it seemed as if all hope was lost, uh, an unexpected place of infertility, uh, God declares, uh, I can still use you. Uh, and God says to Abraham, I will produce something, a legacy out of your union. Uh, and through this unexpected situation, uh, Sarah would bear a son. Uh, miracles happen. Uh, in unexpected places. And I want you to hear that even when you are rerouted to Holland and the pain or suffering you are enduring seems to be too much, God can still birth something new and undergird you with legacy even in the unexpected place. I think someone needs to type hallelujah or shout it just where you are. You know that God is working out for your good even in the unexpected place. Yes, Sarah took matters into her own hands and gave 
her servant Hagar to conceive and bear a son for her. But this is the realization. The promise of God was on Sarah's barren womb and God wanted to burst something out of what others saw as insufficient. Oh, that's your shout right there. Someone has said that you are insufficient, that you are not good enough. Well, I came to tell you that God wants to burst something through you that will surprise this world and let them know that you serve an almighty God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Hallelujah. Miracles happen in unexpected places. Don't give up on your situation. Trust God's plan. God's promise for your life can be birthed out of what others think are impossible. How many of y'all know that there is nothing that is impossible with God? With God, all things are possible. The blessing comes by faith and waiting on the glory of the Lord to be revealed. And I don't know what God has told you in the midst of this season of pandemic and political pressure and job insecurity and turmoil. But what I want you to hear in this scripture is that God is able to produce God's promises even in impossible situations. Yes, the debts don't have to be stacked up right for your good. The odds don't always have to be in your favor. God will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God will turn your story around and bring beauty from ashes. God's promise for your life can be birthed out of the impossible. But when we must ask the question, this is the question that we must ask and pose uh, to each other. What do we do when life does not turn out the way we had in mind? How do we keep trusting God in the midst of it all and believe in God's plan for our lives? So I would like to suggest three ways that we can keep trusting in God's plan. Number one is learn the blessing of the meantime. Learn the blessing of the meantime. In the meantime is a familiar phrase that is commonly used to represent or describe a period between or before something happens or before a specific other period ends. For example, one might say, uh, the doctor says that I have a, a broken bone and it's going to take at least six weeks to heal. In the meantime, from the broken bone to the healing, I must wear a cast and elevate my leg. The meantime usually indicates a period of waiting and working towards a goal, hoping and enduring. Maybe it's enduring the pain in order for you to get to uh, the promise of where you're supposed to go. The meantime is the middle stage, the space or time before the blessing comes. Sarah and Abraham are navigating the meantime. After 90 years for Sarah and 100 years for Abraham, they learned the blessing of the meantime being number one. We may make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Shout with me. Like I said before, Sarah and Abraham took matters into their own hands to have a son and his name was Ishmael. But had them, it was in Holland because God wanted to perform a miracle in Isaac that would be a part of the covenant blessing. Let me fix it up. God wanted to bless Sarah and Abraham, but Sarah took it under her own concern or Abraham took it in their own hands and decided that they would produce the son Ishmael through Hagar, but God said the blessing of Isaac is coming through your barren moon. Holland was exactly where God wanted them to be to experience the power of God. The blessing of the meantime is that God ordered 
is your steps, even uh, when the promise tarries uh, or takes just a little while. Uh, it was 90 years for Sarah. It might be three years for you. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, in the meantime, uh, keep trusting that God is ordering your steps, that God is directing your path, uh, and God will get you there uh, right on time. Uh, and this is hard to hear because, you know, we don't want to wait, y'all. We don't want to go through pain and suffering. And when things uh, for us don't line up the way that we think that it's going to go, we wonder, God, are you there? But I want to tell you that the Lord is ordering your steps. The blessing of the meantime is that God has not forgotten you. And when you can't trace God, know that God is behind the scenes working things out for your good. Don't waste time in the meantime pouting, uh, but submit your prayers and requests to God. Then rejoice uh, in the goodness and grace of our Lord, uh, who will always turn things around right on time. Uh, your situation may seem bleak and unusual to the point that you wonder if God can do anything with it. Uh, I am here to remind you that God doesn't use uh, the usual common and ordinary things of this world uh, to produce his purpose. Uh, God uses what the world would call foolish uh, to shame the wise. Uh, and let me just prove it to you by calling a couple of names. Uh, Y'all know that the Lord used Peter and he had a temper. He used David in a magnificent way and he had an affair. He used Martha and she was a worrier. Noah and he was a drunk. Gideon who was insecure. And Miriam was a gossip. And then in this text, uh, he uses a woman that has a barren womb. God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God chooses the weak things of the world to shame the strong. If you feel that you are weak, God can use you. If you believe that you are foolish, God can use you. Submit to the Lord, be humble and faithful, serving the Lord with gladness. If you, and then if you feel as if you can't do any more, keep on trusting in the Lord. And God will fulfill God's purposes through you. Let us be reminded that we are the chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Walk in your blessing. Walk in your good works. Walk in those gifts that God has deposited in your spirit. Y'all, the blessing of the meantime is knowing that impossible odds set the stage for God's amazing miracles. And the Lord will order your steps through it all. When the odds are stacked up against you, you are positioned to experience a miracle of divine proportions. I just want to say that one more time. When the odds are stacked up against you, you are positioned to experience a miracle of divine proportions. Keep on trusting God's plan. Then number two, we Go, how do we trust in God's plan? Number two is be patient in waiting. Say that with me or type it in the chat. Be patient in waiting. Y'all, we know that that's easier said than done. Amen. One night I was serving as the on-call chaplain at Atrium Health Maine. It is a level one trauma center, center, which means we would get the worst of the worst trauma cases. I was paged late in the evening to be with a family who had brought their young child to the hospital in critical condition. Y'all, there was a heaviness on my spirit as I got the call that the child was sick. I was called by the nurse to provide spiritual support to this family. And y'all, on most calls, I wouldn't know the faith background of the family. And as a chaplain, that didn't matter. My goal for ministry was to provide comfort and support. I always pray before I go into the room, but this time I just felt a need to pray from the room that I was staying in, walking all the way down the hall till I got to the waiting room where the family was gathered. 
Y'all, as I walk in, there's more than just immediate family. There's church family. There's there's friends and there's immediate family all gathered together in this large waiting room, all sitting together and in concern for this child. The family began sharing their story of what happened to their child and their faith in God to heal and restore. Lots of family and friends had gathered and they were praying. After they told parts of the story, the father, you know, he turned to me and he said, do you believe in God? To which I replied, yes, I do. After this exchange, he invited me to sit down and stay for a while in a waiting room. And before leaving, he allowed me to pray with the family. Y'all, now I believe he let me stay in the waiting room and pray with the family because I believed in God and, and I believed in the healing power of our almighty God. In other words, we can touch and agree the family and I and everyone there, we could touch and agree in the spirit and in the natural that God would heal this child. There was power in the agreement. There was power in the affirmation and being in that room with all gathered together that there was the prayers of the righteous with it, which it belleth much. When you are waiting on God to come through for you, uh, you got to be careful who you invite and let stay uh, in, the rating, in the waiting rooms of your life. Uh, you got to start asking some questions. Do you believe God is able to turn my situation around? Uh, do you believe in the power of Jesus to heal the sick and raise the dead? Uh, do you believe Jesus is a way maker, a heaven load bearer, a mind regulator, the bread of life that will feed you till you want no more? And if you don't believe in these things, uh, Honey, I don't mean no harm, uh, but you can't wait with me uh, in this situation uh, because I have been waiting until under this pressure for some time uh, and I have been waiting for my change uh, to come. Uh, I've been waiting for the promise to be manifested in my life uh, and I need someone who can tarry with me in prayer uh, and trust in the Lord with endurance. Uh, I need someone who will declare with me, uh, God has brought me too far to turn back now. I just need someone who will not put their hand to the plow and turn back. So I can't and I won't invite naysayers and passion killers and dream snatchers or negative people to wait with me in my waiting room in my meantime until my change comes. If you want to stay in my waiting room, if you want to help me be patient in waiting for the promise to come you gotta know how to get a prayer through you gotta believe jesus will make a way where there seems to be no way you gotta believe that all things are possible with god you gotta believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper i need someone who has tasted and seen that the lord is good and that knows that the lord is a bridge over troubled waters so don't come in my waiting room if you think or suppose or, or might believe that God will do it. I, I need you to know that God will show up right on time. I have too much at stake. This promise is taking too long. But in the waiting, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Y'all, we can patiently wait and trust in God's plan because in the waiting, as we are waiting in the being patient, we are declaring that I choose to believe that God will correct this virus, that God will correct our political system, that God will heal our land from white supremacy, that all people will be valued and loved and treated with the utmost respect because we are created in the image of God. I choose to wait on the Lord's plan and trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge God and allow the Lord to direct my path as I patiently wait. Number two is we wait patiently and trust in God's plan for our lives. And I'm almost done. And lastly, what we do is we keep serving. God is not through with us yet. How do we trust in God's plan is that we keep on serving. 
in the midst of it all, you just keep on serving because you know that God is not through with you yet. A couple went to the airport to catch their flight. When they arrived at the gate, they were told by an agent to wait to aboard. So they made their way to a spot in the waiting area and took a seat. They were put to the side but did not know why. People began boarding the plane as even more people boarded and time passed. The couple began getting frustrated. Again, they were waiting and didn't know why. After a while, they started to get mad. They thought the airline was treating them very poorly by making them wait with no explanation and no time frame. Now everyone had boarded the plane but them. They were going to be the last to board the plane even though they were one of the first passengers there. All kinds of things were going through the couple's minds. What's going on here? This isn't right. We were here early. Finally, after everyone else was on, their names were called and they were told they could board. The couple walked down the jetway and looked at their boarding pass to find their seat assignments had changed. Unbeknownst to them, they had been upgraded to first class. All of a sudden, sorrow became laughter, sadness became joy, and they each ended up with a pep in their step because it didn't end the way they had anticipated. They realized that sometimes waiting isn't all that bad. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Whatever you are going through, hear me, siblings in Christ. Whatever you are going through, wait on the Lord, and God will bump you up to first class. Hallelujah. God will deliver you. God will supply all of your needs. Uh, God will heal your body, give you joy, unspeakable joy. Restore your mind with peace. Fulfill uh, your highest dreams. Uh, I say wait on the Lord. Uh, I say wait on the Lord. Uh, God will give you fruitfulness in a barren land. Uh, comfort in the midst of sorrow. Plans to prosper you and give you hope uh, and a future. Just wait on the Lord. Uh, keep serving God. Uh, God is not through with you yet. Uh, as Sarah pressed through the barrenness, uh, we keep pressing through our issues uh, and we keep serving, uh, knowing that God has uh, the final say. Uh, keep serving the Lord. As Sarah kept serving and her reputation changed by the power and blessing of God, being known as the matriarch of the Christian faith, uh, keep serving the Lord. God will bless you. Uh, as Sarah kept serving and surrendered to God's plan and the Lord acted on her behalf, uh, keep serving the Lord. Uh, as Sarah kept serving and waited on the promise she lived in the fruit of God's anointing. Brothers and sisters, keep serving. God is not through with you yet. The pandemic is not the end. The racism is not the end. The relationship troubles are not the end. The school hassles are not the end. Do not make a, situ a temporary situation permanent. Let me say it again. Do not make a temporary situation permanent permanent. God is not through with you yet. In the meantime, build what God has in mind and keep trusting in God's plan. Y'all, we have to be like Noah. You know, Noah built the ark. No one had seen anything like it before, and it was a strange idea with unique dimensions, but Noah built what God had in mind, and God sustained Noah and his family through the flood. When you build what God has in mind, God will work the details out as you are faithful to follow. When God called Joshua to lead the people into the promised land, Joshua produced what God had in mind. And even if it seemed strange, God, Joshua went forward with God's plan. And God delivered the promised land into their hands 
as they followed and were obedient. You know, I don't know what God has whispered into your spirit, but I know that God's plan is what's best for us. And when we are faithful to do what God says do, God will work the details out. God will open up the doors and God will give you exactly what you need to reach the promise. All you have to do is receive what God has in store for you. And as I close out this sermon, I just want you to open your hands. And I just want you to stand in a position of receiving what God has for you. God has ordered your steps. God has manifested God's will in your life. And now you just have to stand in a position of surrender, of opening up your heart to receive what God has for you, of opening up your mind to just understand and just be and live in fruitfulness or faithfulness to what God wants to give you. It may not be what you have in mind, but it's going to bless you abundantly beyond understanding in God's favor. So my brothers and sisters, when we trust God's plan, it will always turn out for our good. Be faithful over a few things and God will make you Lord and ruler over many. Trust in the Lord and God will direct your path and build what God has in mind. Live in the meantime blessing, be patient in waiting and keep serving God. The Lord is not through with you yet. In the name of Jesus Christ, Thank you again for joining us this morning. We love you. We love you. We love you. And as our youth told us, I'm going to do a special thing this morning. It's called sign language. V O T E. Vote. Amen. Have a great day, you all. Make sure you go out and bless somebody with Christ's love. Be blessed.